Thank you very much, John. I will not uh, read my speech. I will try to sum up a little bit what we heard as the last, but the only Greek uh, on the panel. First of all, I would like to thank you all for coming here to Athens and thank the economists for bringing you here. Uh, you are absolutely right. We are living in very interesting times, as the Chinese say. But as we all know, it's a, it's a wish or a curse. Um, probably now it's closer to a curse. Because time is changing, the times are changing, everything is changing. And uh, unfortunately, we, I will try to stick still to the <laughs> to the issue in Europe uh, are reacting in uh, a very, very slow way. Europe felt for years that she was absolutely secure for more than 30 years uh, due to the American protection. And she was absolutely sure that uh, economically we will uh, make, um, make it very well due to the energy supplies from Russia. So things were quiet. And then we, the people who are, have to do with diplomacy uh, and the diplomats invented also a wonderful word which was called the frozen conflicts. So the frozen conflicts, one was Nagorno-Karabakh. We tried uh, not very hard to intervene. The other frozen conflict was, of course, Kosovo. The other frozen conflict was Ukraine, the Minsk agreements, and uh, what we uh, wanted to achieve. And of course, the biggest of all frozen conflict, the Middle East, and the situation in the Middle East. Now, the problem is that we were used to the frozen conflicts, and at the end of the day, we didn't do anything to really intervene. The American diplomacy tried, but the European diplomacy was inexistent. And this, I think, is something which has to change in Europe radically. Because today we are in front of a completely new situation. Today we know that we cannot have any kind of real influence on this crisis. One of the best uh, examples is that everybody went to Israel, but each one of himself. President Macron will probably was probably yesterday there. Prime Minister Mitsotakis was there. Uh, the Prime Minister of Britain was there. Everybody was there. But there was no really European presence and possibility to influence the whole situation. Now, why is that? Because the biggest, fear, the biggest problem in Europe today is nationalism. Nationalism combined with populism. Nationalism combined with populism is the worst case scenario for any country. And the price we pay is very high. Zoran, you have the problem in North Macedonia, and it's coming up. And we spoke about the Prespes Agreement. When nationalism combined with populism, for us politicians, and for me as an old politician, it's the most easy thing. You go, you make a wonderful speech, it's nationalistic, it's populistic, everybody applauses, and everybody is happy. But this is not the answer to the problems. So we need today much more responsibility from the European Union, 
a complete change, but complete change of our way to react on foreign policy. And of course, there has been after the Ukraine crisis, a complete change in the way we see our defense systems. Uh, I believe that Europe has also to take the message of change. Because if the world is changing and we stay with our slow and long procedures of decision making, then we will be very, very quickly completely irrelevant. And one last word from the Western Balkans. The Western Balkans cannot stay the black hole of Europe. If we don't understand it now, when we will understand it, it will be again too late. Because the Kosovo-Serbian uh, discussions broke up, because the situation in Bosnia-Herzegovina is uh, a great problem, because Albania is not uh, keeping up with uh, the respect of uh, human rights in uh, putting, for example, Beleri in prison, an elected uh, mayor, because the problems are growing and the European path seems far away than ever. So we have to do something for the Western Balkans and we have to do it quickly. So I'm sorry, John, I didn't lo look very optimistic, but uh, I think that time is running out and we have to run. Thank you.